We are talking tonight about health services for the whole of the Lower Hunter. We're talking about the provision of a new hospital and we are looking for answers around its accessibility, its location, its bed numbers, the services that will be required. The government is refusing to be clear about whether we will be looking at a public-private partnership or as they're now calling it, health partnership. Um, or whether we're going to go with the traditional public model. So where is it right now? We are, we are awaiting a decision from government to, to determine if we will proceed past the EOI phase and into a request for proposals. I find that fairly disappointing. You know, they've already had four to six years and they really can't give us any more actual information uh, and give any guarantee about uh, when the hospital will be built and when it will take its first numbers. We need this hospital, we need it to be public, we need it to be the proper size and we need it now. There were questions asked that were not clearly answered about the size of the hospital, when it's likely to be developed and what the impact for the community. Nearly 50% of the community does not have private health cover and yet we're proposing to have a hospital that substantially supports the private health system. Evidence that has been presented is that privatisation, be it complete or partial privatisation of public services, does not provide more efficient services, does not provide safer patient care, and certainly does not provide a better outcome for the staff that work in those services. This model does not work. It's driven by profit. It can't work. As, as a private company, you're trying to maximise your profits. Fortunately, they're dealing with the product and it's human beings. I asked the panel whether or not they could guarantee that there would be no negative impact on service provision to the community, safety of patient care or degradation of staff employment terms and conditions. If we go further in, in a in a tendering process that unless there is demonstrated value for money we won't go ahead. For staff members that do move over to the private operator my understanding is that award entitlements and employment would be guaranteed for two years. No guarantee that there was going to be maintenance of nurse patient ratios or that there would be maintenance of skill mix ratios within the wards and clinical services. How come I have to fight for my public hospital? I expect to have it, so I don't understand politically how I lost that right. I wasn't even asked. This is exactly what we predicted would happen.